Imagine if every word you thought could be heard by everyone around you. In this world, thinking and communicating would be the same thing. So what would language and society be like? This is exactly how the Trisolaran language works in the novels and TV show Three Body Problem. Hi, I'm Danny Heber, PhD in Linguistics, and this channel, Linguistic Discovery, is all about the science and diversity of language. And today we're going to talk about what the Trisolaran language would be like if it actually existed. In the Three Body Problem, humans make long-range contact with the species known as the Trisolarans, who are named after their trinary star system. The way the Trisolarans communicate is by transmitting thought waves to each other. Because of this, there's no difference between what you think and what you say. Now some of you might already be saying, but I don't think in words, so that wouldn't even work. If that's the case, you're actually in the minority of people who don't think using words. The majority of people use language to some extent while they're thinking. So if you're one of those people who doesn't, then you'll have to consider this video a kind of double thought experiment. So what would the Trisolaran language be like? Well, one of the most important consequences is the fact that Trisolarans are unable to lie. What's really interesting about this is that linguists have long considered lying, or what's called prevarication, to be a fundamental design feature of language. These design features are a cluster of properties which, when taken together, distinguish human language from animal communication. Now, it's important to distinguish here between simple informative signals and intentional communicative signals. Animal Animals have many kinds of informative signals, but the extent to which they have intentional communication is up for debate. So one type of informative signal would be the way that many animals have bright colors which are venomous or poisonous. And these informative signals are typically true and honest because they're evolutionarily costly. An elk can't lie with their antlers because you have to be a strong, healthy elk in order to grow antlers that large. If it were easy to imitate that signal, then it wouldn't be a reliable indicator of the health of an elk. Now some species do evolve deceptive informative signals, such as the way the hoverfly has a stripe on its abdomen in the same way that a wasp does, even though hoverflies aren't dangerous and wasps are. But these signals are only deceptive so long as they don't become commonplace, and they're certainly not intentional. The hoverfly isn't going around intending to deceive anyone. But when it comes to the intentional communication of animal species, we do see some evidence that suggests that they are attempting to engage in deceptive behavior. Now we have to be careful here because it's always really difficult to tell whether these behaviors actually are intentional or whether they're merely learned. So for example, low-ranking female baboons, when they find new food, often try and hide that food from higher-ranking females around them, presumably so that it doesn't become stolen. But higher-ranking females don't bother with that tactic because no one's trying to steal the food from them. Likewise, when alpha male bonobos mate with high-status females, they're usually pretty noisy about about it. They want to show the rest of the troop who they're mating with. But when they mate with low status females, both of them are pretty quiet. In both of these cases, it seems like these simians are trying to do intentional deception. But even if we do see these genuine cases of deception in the rest of the animal kingdom, they're still marginal and nowhere near as extensive as we see in humans. Human language is unique in that talk is cheap and we can lie at will. But this raises an interesting evolutionary question. If we can manipulate truth in language so easily, then why hasn't language just become meaningless? Why doesn't the whole human communicative system just fall apart? Conversation is based on certain principles of cooperation known as Gricean maxims, which I won't go into here, but they basically say that when we converse with each other, we do so in ways that are true, helpful, and relevant. And although you can flout a lot of these conversational principles, like you can answer the question someone is asking literally rather than answering the question that they intended, generally speaking, when we interact with each other, we cooperate. And ironically, it's this very system of social trust that makes lying possible in the first place. Without it, we'd have to assume that all communication is a potential lie, and so it would be meaningless. This strongly suggests that humans had already evolved a culture of cooperation before evolving language. So in one respect, the Trisolaran language is like those elk antlers. The signal can't be manipulated to deceive other people. But in terms of
terms of evolutionary costliness, the Tricelaran language is a lot like human language. It's cheap and easy to produce. Because of this, I think it's really fitting that in the books, when humans first contact the Tricelarans, the Tricelarans live in an authoritarian society. Social cooperation isn't necessary for their form of communication to work, so they've managed to evolve a society without it. But human communication depends on cooperation, so our society relies on it. Ironically, it's only after the Tricelarans encounter humans with our ability to lie that they enter a golden age and throw off the shackles of authoritarianism. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and want to learn more about the science and diversity of language, go check out my newsletter at linguisticdiscovery.com. The Tricelaran language violates other design principles of human language, too. For example, the way the Tricelarans reproduce is by first physically merging together and then splitting apart into three to five offspring. Each of those offspring retains some of their parents' personality traits and memories. Because of this, Tricelarans don't have a childhood and they never have to learn their own language. Their language doesn't have the design feature which we call cultural transmission. But cultural transmission is one of the key ways that human language changes over time. Since every child is exposed to slightly different linguistic input than everybody else, the grammar and vocabulary that they learn is going to be slightly different from everybody else's too. Plus, when children are learning a language, they often find new patterns or they reanalyze old expressions in new ways. And this slowly changes the language with each generation, kind of like a giant intergenerational game of telephone. But on Trisolaris, this process doesn't happen. There are no kids to constantly blame for ruining language. Instead, the Tricelarans would probably acquire a blend of their two parents' idiolects, or personal ways of speaking. However, child language acquisition isn't the only way that languages change. Although our idiolect does tend to stay fairly stable after puberty, the way we speak does nonetheless change throughout our lifetime. We're influenced by all the different social groups we interact with. Assuming the same holds true of Tricelaran society, their language would also change as different social groups interacted. So there would still be some variation and change happening between one generation and the next in Tricelaran, but it would probably happen drastically more slowly than with human language. In the end, if we ever discovered a language like Tricelaran, it would probably force us to toss out a lot of what we thought we knew about the fundamental features of language. But at the same time, a deception-free language might not be as fundamentally different from human language as we originally thought. Human language is very much shaped by its mediums the physiology of the vocal tract, the properties of sounds propagating through air, our ability to perceive those sounds, the processing capabilities of the human brain, and even the medium of time itself. Over the course of the two million years that the genus Homo has been evolving, human language has become highly optimized for these mediums. Just like humans ourselves have become highly optimized for using language, forming a mutual feedback mechanism like some sort of coevolutionary flywheel. If our hearing range were slightly more contracted, we probably wouldn't have sibilant sounds like s, z, sh, or j. If our working memory were slightly smaller, we might not have pronouns or demonstratives or relative clauses and things that refer back to other points in the discourse. If Earth had a warmer climate, we might have more sonorant sounds in our language. If all spoken languages were tonal, it's possible that humans would all have perfect pitch. Humans are capable of making minuscule adjustments to the frequency of the vibrations of our vocal folds within microseconds in ways that other primates can't even come close to doing. We've evolved a degree of incredibly fine motor skills for language. Language is so intertwined with our evolution as a species that it's difficult to imagine what non-human languages would be like. Yet the three-body problem lets us explore another way that language might be, and in doing so helps us think more about what are the essential properties of language in the first place and how do we define it.